Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Friday, March 15th, 2013. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube, DDarko2012, DDarko2013 on my YouTube channels. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the uh, same theme that we kind of had in the last video, in the third video about nukes. Um, and it's say, you know, and just with that being said, just say briefly, opening up here about the whole nuke thing, you have to look at like some of the murals, the Bank of America murals, uh, the murals in Denver airport. Um, there's something that is part of the plan here, which is there's there could be an actual like not a hot war because I don't want to make it seem like there's all these different sovereign nations that are going to be fighting against each other. I don't really think that exists anymore. Um, it's just these global players. They're going to put on this show kind of like the space weapons and the nuclear threat. Uh, but there'll be all these people that will be called off or killed and starred, and there'll be radiation, and nuclear fallout, and there'll be people living underground, and 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 in the ashes they'll build this this new world that they'll have, almost like from a things to come back in the 1930s. I don't know if it's H.D. Wells or whatever, but uh, it's very very telling, and I I think that's I think that's part of the future that we're seeing here. Uh, NSA chief says America is ready to cyber attack. For the first time, NSA chief and head of the U.S. Cyber Command admitted America is ready to attack in cyberspace. Never before has a U.S. official acknowledged that the U.S. government is working on or is in uh, possession of malware capable of attacking a foreign nation. Well, I'm sure they do since we're a Zionist-occupied government and we basically prop up, and um, I guess we are Israel. And uh, they attacked Iran, and Iran knows that, so the Stuxnet and that. Despite the fact that at least one attack, the famous Stuxnet worm, has been attributed to the U.S. Okay, so they went on and said what I said. But it was interesting what they say. They said, NSA says America is ready to cyber attack. So cyber attack other nations or cyber attack individual citizens or sovereign groups or movements. I think that's what they're talking about. Um, okay, so next up, this little pop up here. No, I don't want to join the President Obama's and demand action on guns from Raw Story. Okay, <laughs> Obama. Some Chinese cyber attacks are state sponsored, so they're gonna t they're they're ready to attack uh, with cyber attacks. The government is, and they have a state sponsor. Now these are all coded words, like what Robin was saying about the Black Pope, and um, other examples that I included in today's report about state-sponsored, what is that saying? It's kind of like a false flag, state-sponsored cyber attacks in order to what? To protect your civil liberties? No, to take your civil liberties. But he was talking about what? He's, he's talking about China. They were, the, it was the state, it was the government of China doing it. North Korea accuses U.S. and South of cyber attacks. They've accused the U.S. and South Korea of staging cyber attacks against its official websites after reports of disruptions to its internet services. So, so their official websites uh, says here internet servers operated by a republic have come under daily cyber attacks which are persistent and intensive they said on Friday that coincided with the South Korea US military drill it is nobody's secret that the US and the South Korean puppet regime are massively bolstering up cyber forces and a bid to intensify the subversive activities and sabotages against the uh, basically North Korea so on March 11th, Seoul, South Korea, Washington launched a week-long annual joint military exercise near the Korean Peninsula despite warnings from Pyongyang. The draw, drills involved 10,000 South Korean soldiers and 3,000 U.S. troops. Department of Defense plans to use preemptive deadly force on hackers and cyber threats. Remember, I was talking about this before, using heavy firepower to deter uh, or react to, I guess, cyber threats, including nuclear weapons would remain the ultimate response and anchor to deterrence ladder for cyber threats. This comes from the conventional prompt global strike uh, combatant command. Paper written by the Defense Science Board. Pretty interesting. U.S. military sues Tokyo plant over nuclear disaster. Members of the U.S. military who were tasked with helping Japan with the cleanup 2011 from its nuclear power leak are now suing, claiming the company lied and downplayed the dangers. Which is interesting because new NASA research, this is from June 2011, so it's not really new, points to possible heart connection to Japan earthquake. Recent data released by this uh, Dimitar uh, Ozanov and colleagues from the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland highlights some strange atmospheric anomalies over Japan just days before the massive earthquake and tsunami struck on March 11th. 
says the rapid heating of the ionosphere directly above the epicenter reached a maximum only three days prior to the quake, according to satellite observations, suggested that directed energy emitted from transmitters using the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP, may have been responsible for inducing the earthquake in Japan and the tsunami, and thus the nuclear um, uh, spill. For whatever it's worth, Japan extracts gas from methane hydrate in world's first. They say they successfully extracted natural gas from frozen methane hydrate off its central coast. People dog Japan. I've mentioned this before uh, about why they use nuclear, why they have. Uh, says they would provide an alternative energy source for Japan, which uh, imports all of its energy needs. Bank of Japan may buy derivatives next, so now they're actually getting into the derivative markets. So it says that's what Buffett once declared, weapons of mass financial destruction. So good job, Japan. They are uh, basically at the whim of the Rothschild banking dynasty and the international elites. Chinese firm puts millions into U.S. natural gas stations. So this is what the U.S. now has, right? They're all about natural gas and fracking at the, at the, as they damage um, as they damage the earth to get to it and get to oil like the BP horizon. That's because they keep going out further and further to get oil and not just give it up and find a new energy source. Um, they said here they're quietly rolling out plans to establish a network of natural gas fueling stations for trucks along U.S. highways with plans to build 50 stations this year alone. The Chinese uh, company joins a small but formidable group of players, including Clean Energy, Fuel Corp., and Royal Dutch Shell, an aggressive push to develop infrastructure for heavy-duty trucks fueled by cheap and abundant natural gas. That's another example of China's ambition to grab a piece of the U.S. shale gas boom. Again, this is this is kind of inferring that U.S. is still a sovereign nation. So, <laughs> I mean, we're owned by other countries. We are owned. <laughs> It is not the people's government. It's not for the people by the people anymore at all. China actively countering Western influence across Africa. A recently uh, held meeting says here China's leaders unveil a dramatic long-term plan to integrate some 400 million countryside dwellers. Who dwellers, right? So that makes them sound like they're homeless people into urban environments by concentrating growth, promoting development. That's that's moral urgency, probably, right? You're going to force these people off their lands. Oh, they're gonna make a lot of money off of it, plant GMO crops. So during the Af during an Africom during an Africom in 2008, I don't know what the hell that means. Says uh, citing Africom's guiding principle of protecting the free flow of natural resources from Africa to the global market, before emphasizing how to increase the presence of China is a major challenge to U.S. interests in the region. Says uh, recently, Washington announced U.S. Army teams will be deployed to as many as 35 countries in early 2013 for training programs to fight the terrorists. War criminal becomes Israeli defense minister, so this Mashi Yalin, an ex-Israeli chief of staff and now member of the Neset, has been appointed Israel's minister of defense, says he was chief of staff in 2002 in IDF, of the IDF when Palestinian activist uh, Shahed was murdered in the Gaza Strip by a one-ton bomb dropped by an Israeli Air Force jet F-15. It's kind of like the Indians, right? The Indian uh, protesters, the union activists, where the leader was run over by a bus that was escorted in by the state. <laughs> oh, oh, oops, just a mistake. It says here in 2005, groups of relatives of the victims of the 96 Israeli shelling of the Lebanese town in Kana where some 106 civilians died, filed a suit demanding a jury trial against Yalin in Washington, D.C. Of course, the case went no further. Uh, he said here he was in New Zealand on a fundraising trip when an Auckland court issued a warrant for his arrest and charged the Gaza Strip deaths. Warrant was overruled by New Zealand's Attorney General. He was able to return to Israel. See, that's the, that's the rule of law, right? Not the rule of the jungle. This is, the, this is their law. And uh, that's why you always have people and stuff that just happened to just slip by because you always have people in those positions. We were just talking about an article, a cover an article about the young Israelis that are really staunchly anti-Palestinian. I mean, they're just like, I don't know what you want to, I don't want to call them racist, but they're tribalist. But, uh, uh, but basically they attack Arabs just at whim, just because they are. Arabs. It says, this man who is pro-settlement, stridently anti-Iran, and fervently against the existence of any kind of Palestinian state, will be Israel's next defense minister. So everybody clap and cheer. The war criminal will probably be shaking Obama's hand when the president visits next week. And remember, they have, what, 
um, draconian policies. They have half of the police in Israel protecting Obama when he goes there. And why? Because remember, they'll, they'll buy all this crap about the chilling relations between Netanyahu and Obama and all this crap. This is, again, this is to make it seem or appear as if the U.S. is no longer behind or backing Israel, to make them seem vulnerable so that Iran gets kind of standoffish and, and tries to kick this off. Hegel to Barack, U.S. will support Israel despite fiscal constraints. U.S. Israel Defense Minister meets in Washington to, to discuss war in Syria. Nuclear Iran, continue military, diplomatic, whatever, right? But basically what? They're going to support him. So they express strong commitment to Israel's security, including maintaining Israel's military edge and continue U.S. support for missile and rocket defense systems in spite of fiscal constraints. So this is after, you know, they all said, you know, all the nomination of Hegel was stalled and he's, you know, anti-Israel and everything. The truth is, is we're going to see what? This is this is where uh, the Israeli expansion really, really moves forward here. Iraq, I'll do it again in a minute. So it's not something that you'd expect to hear. But from Cheney, maybe he says, "Hey, Rock, I'll do it again in a minute. Never, never, uh, never regretted it. So if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it in a minute." Talking about um, misuse of intelligence and use of torture techniques, along with, of course, private contractors that went in there and just—it um, was a complete fraud. <laughs> Iraq war wrong. Blair war criminal says poll. So more than one fifth of Britons believe the former Prime Minister Tony Blair who joined the U.S. to invade Iraq should be put to trial for war crimes. So, really, you're going to put them in their own in their own criminal court, international criminal court, whatever? Will they selectively put certain people there? No, he's on a book tour. He's making millions to the elites. He did his job. So no, it's you know, Iraq war killed 120,000, cost U.S. 800 billion dollars. 116,000 Iraqi civilians, and just think about all the ones that were mutilated, like that person with birth defects from uh, uranium-tipped bombs. More than 4,800 coalition troops died in Iraq, not to uh, uh, mention all the dust and, and, and debris and their legs blown off and how they were experimented on. That was the purpose, too. Experiment on weapons and experiment with research into cyborgs. You know, those poor souls think they're fighting for their country. It says here, and, and, and the crazy thing is that they have record numbers of threats that are applying for benefits that aren't getting them. So just goes to show you Obama's loyalties lie. Between the outbreaks of war in 2003 and the U.S. withdrawal of 2011, cost the U.S. $800 billion. That's about a year's worth of uh, defense budget. Could eventually reach $3 trillion, they said. Iraq war could cost $6 trillion. The current price tag is already $2 trillion. So... So there's additional $490 billion in benefits owed to war veterans if they actually get them, but the cost could grow to more than $6 trillion over the next four decades when interest payments, interest payments, right? Britain just got done paying off the U.S. for entering the war and, and, and loaning them all that stuff, the Lend Lease Program, right? Like, you know, they just got done paying, what, 2006 or nine. Karzai wants change in U.S. relationships. This guy better be careful what he's saying here. He says that... Uh, during a gathering at the presidential palace with Hegel, he said the relationship should be between two sovereign nations. So is this part of all the rhetoric about them pulling out? It's just a, I think this is all rhetoric to give him the, uh, the, the appearance that he's standing up for his people when he was a puppet for the drug trade and, and all that stuff the whole time, right? So he, he criticizes them. The media falls on board and goes along with it. And uh, so we'll know. We'll know, right? If he's gone, if he's dead or something, or his relatives die, then we know that maybe it was for genuine. If not, then we know it's all part of the agenda, part of the plan. U.S. drones disrupt normal life of Pakistani civilians. So it says here they're disrupting the normal life of ordinary people living there. I think it's unacceptable, and this is what the United Nations has pointed out. The crux of the problem is not killing the killer. It's disrupting the normal life of ordinary people living in the tribal areas. You talk about post-traumatic stress order. Try having drones, hearing the buzz of drones flying overhead every day. And especially in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, court docs reveal Blackwater's secret CIA past. They've also been a virtual extension of the CIA. So U.S. military's most notorious security contract, which makes sense because in, in the recent Homs operation, we said what? Mossad and Blackwater and CIA led the operation in Syria. This propaganda, Israel sees 50,000 Syrian fighters backed by Iran. They should say how many thousands of foreign mercenaries uh, being hired by Israel, right? Sunni extremists. 
Some more propaganda, Russia and Iran prop up Syria's war machine. That's because they want to fund Britain, France, and Turkey. Lastly, Syrian army kills al-Nasra al-Qaeda front commander. And Syria says it might strike militant positions inside Lebanon. Thank you.